Hello everyone, I'm Roy Baker and welcome to another video on 3D visualization. In this video, we are going to take a look at how you can bring your models from CET Designer over into Autodesk Revit. CET Designer is a very popular space planning application where people are doing large office layouts to small homes. And Revit, very favored in the auto architectural community, they do a lot of buildings and they also do a lot of space planning there as well. And so sometimes you have teams that need to share models back and forth. So in this video, this will be CET to Revit. Now, if you happen to want to go the other way, I did create a video on that as well. Here you can see my YouTube channel. Um, there are playlists and new videos coming all the time for all kinds of various applications, from Photoshop applications to augmented reality to uh, real-time interactive applications in Unreal, you name it. There's going to be tons of these videos coming out. But there is another video that goes the opposite way where you have a Revit model or a scene or a building, uh, interiors, exteriors, and you want to bring that information into CET Designer and you want to bring over the materials that come with it. And that's the tricky part. Um, it's very easy to take a Revit scene and save it out as, say, DWG and bring it over into CET Designer. Um, but the sad thing there is you will lose all those materials that you spent all that time assigning. So you want to bring those things over and carry the materials over with it. And that is what this video here you can see on my YouTube channel does. But let's get to the subject at hand, which is looking at how we can take Revit inform CET information back over into Revit. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this website and we're going to go ahead and get started. OK, so here you can see that I have a CET designer file open and it's a very simple file. Uh, it simply has a chair, a nice Herman Miller chair, Herman Miller desk. We've got a coffee cup. Uh, we have a, a privacy screen. We could add in all kinds of other objects, but since this is a basic tutorial, no need to really build out a full vetted scene. So I'm just going to go with something very simple, such as what you see here. And so this is the materials that come with CET Designer. Um, I'm not going to go into the material applications and the material creation within CET. You will see me open up the material lab and we'll need to do that because we're going to be doing an investigation of what the bitmap names are that are being used on this furniture. So you will see me get into the material lab, but only for investigation. We won't make any materials in CET. So here is a scene where you can see the CET models. I'll we'll go ahead and spin them around a little bit so that you can see. And the idea is we want to go from the CET file and to the Revit scene of the same thing. So you can see here's the same models that were defined inside of CET Designer, imported into Revit, just got basic you know, shading going on here, realistic basic shade, and you can see all the same materials have come over into that. And so what we're gonna have to do in Revit is to look at what's the best method of exporting, what format do we use from CET, and we bring it into Revit, what it, what's going to be the condition? Is it just say insert and hit render and we're done? Or is there other things we have to do, such as adjusting materials and then rendering the scene? And that's what we're going to explore and look at this process. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start a brand new scene inside of Revit so that we can have a, a blank slate and make sure there's no lingering materials or anything that I've defined in this demo scene here. And let me just pull up uh, some rendering so you can see exactly what these final images are going to look like. So let's take a look at those two images now and kind of see what the final output is, could be. And so here I'm going to just bring up Adobe Bridge and you can see two images. The image on the left was rendered from CET Designer and the same model, same materials was rendered out of Revit. Now, slightly different lighting, you know, the, the generic studio is what I used inside of CET Designer just to say, give me default lighting with a sort of a white sweet floor. And then over in Revit, um, I just, you know, created a floor plane through a white sort of shiny material on it and just set the sun to be the middle of the summer uh, in the United States somewhere. And so you can see the rendering, a little bit harder shadows, but this is not a rendering tutorial. I'm not going to go through lighting and rendering. That's for other tutorials that will show up for all of these applications. This is just looking at getting that data over from the left, from CET to the right over into Revit. Okay, so back to our starting point which is going to be CET Designer. So 
with this standard model, um, what, let's take a look at some of the materials and then we'll do a quick export. So let's just go into the model lab. Tools and Material Explorer. And I will simply just pick something just to, just to see one uh, material. So we'll just take the back of this chair. And let's bring over from the other screen. Whoops. Sorry about that. There we go. So here is sort of the back solid color to that particular chair. So one of the things that we're going to end up doing as we start seeing these materials that we're going to be investigating inside of CET Designer, we're going to have to look at the model lab because we're going to have to interrogate more than likely the sort of primary color. Now, this one doesn't have an image to it, but there will be times where there is an image and we're going to have to look at that. All right. So. We'll be back to the model lab and to the material explorer. We don't really need the material explorer. It's really the model lab that we're really going to be interested in. But what file format is the best format to export out in order to bring into Revit so that we can sort of bring the material definition uh, over as much of that material definition as possible into the program? So let's go ahead and take a look at the export. So we've got file and the import export. And from here, I'm going to do an export drawing and the format. So the format we want to bring out in now, ideally FBX is the best format possible when you go into most of your gaming or your rendering application. So if you were working with a 3D studio artist or someone who was in Unreal Engine or someone who is using Twin Motion, um, some of these more real-time applications, uh, you would want to use the FBX or Maya. You would want to use the FBX format. Uh, that old Autodesk film box uh, format, as we called it, there is a lot of good information over, especially the mapping coordinates and your mapping coordinates are the instructions on how a material is laying on an object and repeating, as well as the material themselves. And it's kind of like a zip file. It actually packages up whatever your material images are, sort of like a giant zip. And then when someone in those applications exports that, or excuse me, imports that information, those programs will decrypt that FBX file and recreate those bitmaps and drop it in the same location, typically, is where they make their scene. I'd love to use FBX. Sadly, Revit is one way with FBX. It makes a lot of FBX files, and that's how we actually go from Revit to CET. Go check out that video. But it doesn't import FBX files. It, strange, you know, Revit is very parametric driven software, similar to like Pro Engineer or SolidWorks. It wants everything to be natively created inside of Revit. It doesn't really like to import much geometry, but we're going to force its hand. So we're not going to use FBX, sadly. Certainly not DWG or DXF. Um, those are good formats if all you care about is the geometry, but they're not going to carry over any material definitions. They're not going to carry over UVW mapping information, which is what we really need because, you know, knowing when we reapply those materials, we want them to lay on the objects in a very specific direction, especially very uh, objects with contours to them. You want to definitely, you know, see, hey, this person who created that in CET Designer took a lot of care to make sure like opacity maps were mapped properly on geometry or uh, fabrics were laying over the arm of a chair uh, and they're not sort of, you know, planarly mapped. They're actually wrapping map, you know, what we call face mapping. And so that's something that DWG and FBX are not going to support. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the SketchUp format. So SketchUp is kind of like a another version of FBX, but doesn't carry as much information that FBX can contain. Now, if you want to go straight to SketchUp, then go to SketchUp and just you know, export and go in and import your file right in the SketchUp and you're, you're done. Everything should be good to go right in that program. This is not a tutorial to look at that. We'd have to do a few more things in SketchUp, but I'm not going to go there. And so, but SketchUp is something that Revit does import versus FBX. Again, I'm, I don't understand the logic why Autodesk, which really kind of owns the FBX format, would import SketchUp files, but would not import FBX files. I don't know. <laughs> if someone finds out, you know, put it in the comments. I'd, I'd really love to know the logic behind the importation of SketchUp, but not the importation of, of FBX files. Okay. So maybe because Autodesk doesn't like Trimble and they wish people would stop using it for doing space planning and architecture. I don't know, but SketchUp's a great program. So I'm going to export this out 
as a SketchUp file. And I'm just going to go to, say, my D drive, and I'll just make a new folder, and I'll just put an underscore so it goes up to the top, and I'll call this CET-RV. So this is going to be for my CET to Revit. Okay. All right. And we'll go into this folder here. And we are going to call this thing um, CET file, right? And it's going to be a SketchUp. All right, now the next thing we have to decide on is the resolution, because CET Designer can contain multiple resolutions of those objects. In this case, I'm just going to go for the super. I want to get the maximum resolution because I am going to render this out and I want to render with the best quality possible. Now, if, you, if you're going to be mass populating this in your Revit scene, maybe taking this particular furniture setting or whatever you're exporting and creating 100 or 200 of those, you may want to back off and say, maybe super isn't the way to go because it's going to make a very large scene and really slow down my rendering time. Or maybe you have multiple versions of maybe a super res for a really close up shot. And then maybe you have some very low res if you've got them off in the distance and the camera is never going to go there. You can have that multi-level of detail if that's what you're looking for. So I'm going to stick with the super and I'm just going to hit OK. So we've got it in progress and done. So I've got a SketchUp file. So now I'm ready to go to Revit. We'll restart that scene and we'll import this file and we'll start looking at what do we have to do next? Because it's not just a matter of importing and hitting render. There'll be a few more things that we're going to have to do. All right, so let's just minimize CET. And I'm just going to um, start a whole new Revit. So I'm just going to close this. And here you can see the same thing. This is what we're going to be making. What you're seeing here is the Revit family. So the key is whenever you are bringing these models over, um, I can take the SketchUp file. I can go straight to my Revit scene if I want and just import directly there. Um, I like making families because then it becomes something I can reuse over and over again, especially if it's a common typical or a chair or some object, like just the table by itself or some other item that you have inside of CET. You want to keep reusing it in multiple um, Revit scenes. So it's better to bring it in as a, as a family and save it there. That way you can just you know, load your family whenever you want in Revit. And so this is what we're going to try to recreate is we're going to recreate this Revit family. So I'm just going to close this one and we're going to start a new one. All right, so we're back to the beginning. And so step number one, we made our SketchUp export and we used the Super Res. Step number two is we're going to make a family and we're just going to do a generic model family. And then we're going to bring it in and start messing with or fixing as it will be those materials. So let's go ahead and get started with that one. So we're going to do family, we'll do a new, and let me bring over the dialog because we have to choose a starting template file. If you've never made families before um, for what we're doing, don't be scared by it. Whenever you create a Revit family, there's all these base family types. They can have lots of preloaded information for you. And the one that I'm going to use is just flat out Imperial generic model. So let's just go to English Imperial and we'll go to the uh, generic model. Right? One of the most generic ones that you can use doesn't really bring in anything new into the table. I just want to have flat out generic model and I need to decide where uh, this is the template. So I'm picking a template. I haven't really saved the family yet. This is just the, the template of what is the basis behind the family. So here we go. Generic model. We'll hit open. And of course, we are in a, a empty file. When we hit save, that's when we'll pick, you know, the location where we want to you know, save the Revit scene out so we can keep this. So here we are in the standard reference level, kind of your flat 2D view of the family. And we're going to import in that SketchUp file. Okay, so we'll do a insert. And we want to bring in a import CAD, as you can see here, and bring the dialog over. Zoom. Okay, so let's go find our file. So we're going to go to the D drive. And I there I love it. This it may be a little trick that you've never seen. Sometimes you watch these YouTube videos, and every now and then you get a little nugget of something that says, 
oh, I didn't know you could do that. That's a nice idea. So since I'm in a tutorial and I don't want to have to scroll through all of these folders, I want it immediately when I go to D drive, I wanted it to go. I want that CET up front. So what do I do? If you drop an underscore in front of the name of whatever folder you're creating. It'll automatically be, that's sort of like in the sorting of folders, it's symbols, numbers, and then letters. So I always oh, just throw an underscore in there. I know it's going to be right at the top. Okay, so we are importing in a SketchUp. So let's change our file type. So you can see there's no FBX here. So let's go to SketchUp. There's our SketchUp file. And what level? We're just going to all that level will just attach to the origin. No changes need to be made here. Everything is fine just as is. So we're going to go ahead and just hit open. We'll wait for it to process. There it goes. All right, so here we can see in this 2D view that the model has been brought in. I want to immediately just switch over to a 3D view so we can start looking at the materials that came in and different shading views and then kind of continue forward. All right, so I will just go to views and I'll switch over to the default 3D view. And so here we're in the standard sort of a line. Now, one thing that happens is when this model comes over, since it's not na native Revit information, you're not going to get beautiful ISO lines. You're going to see all the triangles of that model. Sometimes it'll be nice and clean. Uh, sometimes those ISO lines are going to be kind of dirty. When we bring things like this into um, uh, SketchUp, SketchUp itself does have some tools or some plugins that you can download, like um, AMS Soften, which is a great free plugin for, for SketchUp, and where you can say smooth out and hide all those edges. Because you really don't want to see that if you're looking at wireframe. But again, this is not that tutorial in Revit. Um, let's just continue on. And so I'm going to change my style. So down here at the very bottom of the screen, and this, I'm not going to go too much into telling you where to find things, but I will just here because we're going to go to this one a lot. So down in the bottom corner here of this viewport, I've got a couple different settings that I'm going to change. And the first one is the visual style. And so if I do shade it, I should see that, oh, it is sort of honoring the generic shaded color, same plain shaded colors that existed inside of CET designers are coming over. Now, these aren't the bitmaps yet. We want to see a wood grain. We want to see uh, that sort of a blue cyan, uh, beautiful uh, fabric on that uh, privacy screen, etc. cetera. Um, but this is just a standard shaded view. So if I continue on with consistent colors, it cleans it up a little bit. And I can even, at this level, I can get rid of these lines. So if I go into the graphic display options, let me bring this over. I can go in and, and depending on my shading level, I'll have the option to get rid of the edges. So here, consistent color, I don't have that option. So let's see, shaded, ah, I can do it and apply. So nice one, we're gonna stick with this shaded for a while and we're gonna bounce back and forth between shaded and realistic because the realistic setting that is here, which I'll just flip to it, this is where this is gonna represent the closest match of seeing your materials, the, the mapping, the repeats of the fabrics. And here you can kind of see where are the materials? Is this a viewport problem? Is it a render problem? We're gonna find out in just a minute. Okay, I'll, I'll put this back to shaded and just hit apply and hit OK. And I can flip back and forth very quickly with these by simply using this by saying shaded, which we are now, or realistic or shaded. And I'll leave it in the shaded view and I'm going to go into the renderer and just do a quick draft rendering just to see what we have here. So let's just, oh, and sorry about that. We're in developing a family table. One of the side effects of working with a table, um, excuse me, a, a Revit family, a fa table, we're not making a table on this one, but a Revit family is you can't render. We'd have to bring this model into an actual Revit scene, which would then enable the, the renderer. So the renderer isn't part of the family. This is something, you know, wish list item. I think it would be really, really nice when you were developing a family that you could see the effect in a renderer. Um, and, I, you know, and I looked for, maybe I'm missing it. Someone please, you know, put it in the comments below that, Roy, it is in there. You didn't see it. You know, I'm just blind to it. Tunnel vision, if you will. But, you know, typically when I, I go into manage, I got materials but I don't see render. And render is typically in view and render is totally missing. 
So I want to render this. So I'm going to jump over and create a temporary scene just to import it over into a Revit scene, which will enable the renderer. So we'll leave this here. Um, first, I've got to save it or I'll never be able to bring it in uh, because I've got to save this family. I'll do a file and we'll do a save and bring over the save dialog box. And we're going into the same folder on the D drive, the CET, and we will call this our, how about station one, not exclamation, how about station one? I like it. And this will be an RFA file, right? Not a, not a template file. And we'll just hit save. Now I've got my um, family saved. Now I'm ready to import that in into a new scene and test the rendering. All right, so file and new. And we will use the just standard architectural template. Hit start. And let's go in and insert this. So we will go to our insert load family. And let's just jump on over to the D drive. CETRV, there's our Revit family. You can see. Go ahead and hit open. I'll just drop it in the center of the view and we'll switch over to a 3D view and we'll zoom in. Oh, oh sorry, <laughs> I forgot. Loading the family doesn't automatically insert. I'm sitting there going, where is it? Did I do something wrong? Um, let's go in to architecture and let's insert that as a component. <laughs> I just kind of lost it there. All right, there it is. So we'll just drop it here in the center and we'll just hit escape. And let's go on over into a 3D view so we can zoom in. We can zoom in here on the 2D view. That's fine. We could even drop a floor in here, but I'll, I'll do that later because we're going to re-import after we clean up the materials. So let's just go into a view. We'll just go to a generic 3D view. We'll zoom in. Okay. And let's just change to, again, there's a shaded view. Let's just optimize that. Let's get rid of the lines again. We're in a new file. We're not in the family. So let's just go in and change the shaded style to get rid of the edges. Hit apply, hit okay. And let's just do a render. Now I could go in here just to check and hit realistic. So again, we still got that sort of gray where the materials go. I'll just leave it in shaded. And let's go to the render dialog here, open up render, leave it at draft for right now. And let's just hit render. Let's see what we get. And there's no materials. It's blank, like just clay. Um, so what happened? Well, in the import process, when Revit does import in that CET designer file, it is bringing the materials over. Just it's putting them in the wrong slot. So we're losing. And this is something I wish, you know, this is a fix that Another wish list for Autodesk you're going to see here is that Revit materials have different forms. They have uh, what is called sort of the realistic mode, you know, the physical or PBR mode, and they have sort of the viewport mode. So you can toggle back and forth in Revit between seeing simple materials, simple shaded materials like we see in the shaded form to realistic materials, which realistic puts more work on more effort on your GPU. So we don't typically hang out in the realistic mode and see all those beautiful textures because it just slows down Revit. And so Autodesk said, well, we'll just create this basic shaded form, which hasn't, you know, what are its own material definition as well, but it doesn't contain things like reflectivity, doesn't contain bitmaps. Um, it's just a flat color, which makes things really, really fast on your graphics card or the GPU. So I'm just going to close the renderer. And so here you can see the flat shaded. And so what happened to the materials? Well, before we go back to the family, let's just sort of, you know, look at the, the Revit material, uh, a Revit material and see, you know, what those different panels are. So I'm just going to go to manage and open up the material editor, if we want to call it that. And here we go. We have the graphics panel and we have the appearance can panel. And when we look at this generic material that I've got selected, you can see that in the graphics panel, you can assign a color and a transparency and surface patterns. Um, 
just a pattern, just a basic pattern or background pattern you know, or a cut pattern. So not a whole lot. But if we go to appearance, now we start getting into the metallic PBR type of material that Autodesk implemented, I believe, with Revit 2019. I'm in Revit 2020, I think. Um, and this you know, also carries over that metallic PBR structure. There's two different forms of 3D materials in what we call the PBR world. There's spec gloss, and then there's metallic roughness. And this is the metallic roughness form, not the spec gloss form. That's the, the, the chosen PBR or Revit. But in here, you can see there's a lot more channel information that we can pull from that physical base material such as color or an image, which defies an albedo or the diffuse, as some people like to call it. Um, I believe in CET Designer, that is otherwise known. If we open up its material explorer, and we'll just go into the lab, I believe it's called the primary color. So primary color in the bitmap that can be defined inside of CET Designer. Um, we flip over to Revit, it's called the generic uh, of the appearance. Right, it is the um, it is the albedo or it's just a generic color reflectivity that can be. If I turn this on, um, I can then I'll just move the sphere open, so I can start deciding what type of reflectivity I want this to have. Is it plus there's metallic and non-metallic, so I have to decide. You know, non-metallic says you're going with more of the spec gloss type form, a little bit lower down on the what the capabilities of being able to deal with reflections. Um, you can if you're going to do like a flat material with no reflectivity, it doesn't really matter whether you say metallic or non-metallic. Metallic, it, it, that roughness is a little bit, I think, more advanced and more applications like AR, like metallic roughness, roughness over spec gloss. But I mean, there's a big argument. People can you know say, oh, no, this camp, that camp. But I'm just going to keep going with metallic. And of course, um, the reflectivity, let's see, CET Designer also has reflectivity. And if we look at it in CET's material lab, uh, we can see that they also have reflection. And so I can turn that on and I can adjust that reflectivity if I want, you know, on this sphere. It seems to be kind of, uh, oh, I think what I need to add in is also a little specularity. Uh, specular is sort of the highlight gloss. The reflection on its own in the model lab doesn't doesn't really show you anything. Um, you have to, you know, go in and have a background image so you can see something really happen in the background. I'm not going to worry about getting into that right now. Different tutorial on the model lab inside of CET. Um, so we have specular and we have reflection back in Revit. We have reflectivity and specular is just where they it, sort of up in the generic form. It is the glossiness value. Um, so that specularity, which is, you know, what is the hot spot? Is it diffused? Is it very sharp? And then within that, that reflectivity, you know, um, orb, if you want to call it, how much reflection exists. So you can have something that's sort of very, very like a, a polished aluminum, uh, something that's very, very sanded very, very, very heavily would have a very diffused specularity, but it can have still high reflectivity built into it. Um, they usually go hand in hand. You know, if you polish something, you would assume it would have more re reflectivity, but you can sort of separate those two. And then you have transparency, CET has transparency, cutout, self-illumination, bump, and tint. And if we jump over to CET, uh, we have these channels of reflectivity, opacity, and bump. So not quite as many uh, channels are there. Um, inside of CET, but fairly comparative of what can happen between a material that's defined in CET Designer over to Revit. Now, let's kind of go back to why did we go through this? I wanted to just show you that material you know, comparison because inside of CET Designer, you've probably used several materials, lots of them that have bitmaps loaded in all of those different you know, shader channels for bumping, for, for transparency, for cutouts, all of those things, especially for the primary color. And so let's see in Revit, those didn't carry over when we did the rendering. And when we took a look at going with the realistic form, uh, we lost those. And so what happened? Did, they, did we do something wrong in the family? Is it, you know, what's going on? And that's what we're going to look at is we've got to do some more adjustments to the family. So I'm just going to kill this scene here and I'll come back and just make a new one. And I won't bother with saving this one. 
And so now I'm back in the family. And so we see here, you know, even within the family, I can't render in the family, but I can look at that realistic. So really at this point, you know, where am I at? Well, all I, uh, at this point, I've done a file. I've done an imp, I've started a family on the generic template for generic model. I did an import sketch up and now, um, my materials didn't come over with me. They, they seem to be there. And the, the, the issue and the problem was that all those wonderful colors that were defined inside of CET Designer loaded up in the graphic panel of Revit's material library. They didn't load up into the realistic one. And I have, in, thankfully, in the family table, I have that material. Oops, wrong button. I have the same material lab. So all those definitions that CET stored tried to get pushed into this tab, the graphics tab. And the graphics tab can't store those bitmaps. Um, it's all about just generic color or you know, crosshatch fill patterns. It's, it doesn't know to, to understand that. So the SketchUp file, which we use as a transporter, has it. If I, was to, if I went to SketchUp, I'd see that that information is there. But when this Revit scene imported the SketchUp file. It took the SketchUp converted material definitions from CET and threw them into this generic or graphics tab and not the appearance tab, which is really where we wanted to go. And you know, maybe we can you know talk to Autodesk and say, hey, if CET is making these SketchUp files and that material information is there, when I make it a SketchUp and I bring it over. Um, def, you know, read the materials and sketch up and pump them into appearance. Don't pump them into graphics. Now, I'm assuming that it, that's the problem. Then it's an Autodesk problem. Now, Autodesk or an engineer, software engineer there may turn around and go, no, that's not exactly it. It's maybe it's CET designer when it makes the SketchUp file is doing something, you know, different. And so that when Revit reads the SketchUp file, it doesn't bring that over. The only way to really know is I'd have to find a true SketchUp file and import it and see what happens with its materials to see if it happens, if it throw, tries to put them in graphics tab, which is, you know, not renderable and drop instead of dropping them in the appearance tab. So let's see if we can fix this thing. You know, so we imported it. We've got it. OK, Roy, it's not rendering. How do we fix these materials? Well, I'm going to stay in the realistic view. And the reason for that is I need some way of quickly seeing the material update that we're going to make um, without being able to render it. So I don't want to have to like, you know, alt tab, alt tab between shaded to realistic. So we're just going to hang out in the realistic form. And let's go back to the material editor and let's sort this scene by just the SketchUp models. Now, since I'm in the family table, I know if you do a lot of material application in Revit, if we were in a full Revit scene, right here where my mouse is, we would have the option to choose like all materials or like the architectural materials or what would be what's called a SKP, which is your SketchUp imported materials. And so you, you can filter in the full on scene. And that's important because you may be bringing this family over into your scene. And maybe you want a wood desk you know, with, a, um, with a walnut cherry tint to it. But you want to take the same family, duplicate it in the same scene, and then maybe change it over to sort of an ash. Or um, maybe you want it to just be some kind of basic laminate. Um, no matter what the object is and you want to change its material, it's important that you know, how do I quickly get there and filter it? And you can do that and look for an SKP in the full-on Revit uh, Evolve scene. But since I don't have to worry about it here, now here you're going to see some really strange naming convention. Now these are all of the materials that you see in this list that came over with that SketchUp import, plus a few generics that are in the in the family generic models template that we started with. And some of these names like cardboard. So that tells me, oh, that's the cardboard wrapper that was around the um, the coffee um, cup. Uh, the Starbucks cup, if we want to call it that. And look at the crazy name. It, it's almost like this hybridization between the material name and the bitmap that defined it. Now, the long, crazy, insane names that you see 
on these bitmaps. And for those of you that have ever done an FBX export out of CET Designer and brought it into applications like Unity or Unreal or Max or any other application that brings in FBX, you're, you're probably nodding your head going, I have seen that before. It is crazy. When CET creates materials, it uses sort of a randomizer to sort of crazy cr change out the names of a bitmap that was used in the model lab, uh, not the material lab, but the model map lab inside of CET Designer. It, they bring in, when, when a CET person is setting up a model and they bring in something called uh, cardboard.jpg or cardboard PNG, what CET does is it brings it in, it converts it into its own format and then gives it this insanely long name. And the reason for that is so that if there happens to be a duplicate, maybe some other company has their own cardboard JPEG. Because remember, CET is trying to accommodate a lot of different vendors. So company A may have created a coffee cup and a, a Starbucks cup. And there is something called cardboard. And they use cardboard you know, PNG. And then company K may have also had uh, maybe a, a Big B uh, coffee and just move that out of the way. Whoop. May have uh, created a Big B uh, or Caribou uh, coffee mug. And they also had something called cardboard, PNG, or JPEG. Two different sort of bitmaps, maybe different logos. And so what happens in the world of CET Designer, when, when you use CET, all those bitmaps are downloaded to your hard drive. And so how would it know which one to use? If you can't have two exact bitmaps in the same place called cardboard jpeg or png so cet solved that problem by randomizing with just incredibly long names these bitmaps so that you would never run into having a collision and that's what we see here and what happens is when revit interpolates that cet material it's interpolating it by looking at that randomization that happened to exist in those bitmaps and so we get these crazy long names um, that you can rename. Thankfully, if I wanted to go to this particular material, I could go into identity and change its identity. But I don't want to do that yet. Don't run and immediately change your identities because we want to go find those bitmaps that CET was using. They're down. If I'm on the same computer that CET designer is on, all those bitmaps still exist and I can get to them very, very quickly and apply them as a um, generic sort of albedo material into the appearance channel for this material. Once I get that in there, then I'll change the identity name. And that's really all, all we're going to be doing is looking for bitmaps and then some that don't have bitmaps. Now, not all materials in CET Designer are bitmap driven. Some are just, oh, here's a color and they're procedural. They just use a color for this, you know, a slider for that. And we'll have to recreate those because a lot of that information wasn't brought over because Autodesk tried to stuff it in the graphics tab and not the appearance tab. And that's, we're sort of recreating the materials. That's the downside. Now, if you're using something like Inkscape or V-Ray and you have your own material library that you just want to say, oh, I don't really care about those materials. I'm, I'm just, I'll just apply my own. Great, you're done. Just simply open up your material library and start applying them to that model and you're done with the video, you know, happy trails. You're good to go. You're, you're, everyone's going to be happy that, ooh, awesome. But a lot of us don't have material libraries. We're bringing over the CET and I never made a material for that fabric or I never made a material for that metallic silver uh, from, say, a company like Herman Miller. So I need to just recreate these on the fly. And that's what I'm going to continue with. OK, so let's take care of the cardboard. So I'm going to look at this long name. So this long name is really important here. I, I, I want to look for that um, in another folder. And so when I go, I'm going to copy this to the clipboard. So I'll just do a right click copy and I'll just use my keyboard, you know, control C. And I'm going to go to appearance and I can see that, you know, all of the appearance, if I go to every one of these materials, the appearance is just, just flat out gray, this 80, 80, 80, because it's this generic Autodesk appearance. But I need to modify this, and I know this must be that cardboard um, since the name sort of matches. 
So I'm going to go to image and I'm going to say a little over here on the right hand side, a little down arrow. I'll just hit image. And where is it? Well, I can show you where your CET images are. And make sure you do this. And you may want to save those images off because CET can dynamically change your cache folder. So when you find them, maybe save them over to another drive. But just to speed things up, I'm just going to go find them myself. So if I drop this down, and on, for me, I installed CET on the D drive. So, but wait a minute, I installed it on the D drive, but CET drops all that cache information and my user logon. Now I'm using Windows 10, so I'll go to C. And then I'll go to users and I'll find my user. And I will then go to what is called the app data. Now, if you don't see your app data folder, you may have to go into your Windows properties and say show hidden items. Um, if you don't know how to do that, that's a great call your IT department sort of uh, request there. But I'm in app data and I'm going to go to local and I'm going to look for CET designer or CET data. And from there, we'll go, I'm using the 64-bit version, of course. So 64-bit and then temp, because like I said, this is a temporary cache. So I'll go temp and give it a second, because there's a lot of bitmaps here. Let it read. We'll let it read. We'll let it continue to read. Okay. And so materials. And there they are. All of those bitmaps, whenever I work on CET Designer, um, these are all my cached bitmaps, some from the scene that I had, some from other CET scenes that I've been working on. I don't want to have to search through this scene. Now you know why I copied from Revit the bitmap name that was applied in the material. So I'm just going to paste this in here and hit open, and voila! Bam, there's the cardboard image. Um, if I want to see it, I can go into edit image and I can see there's the cardboard. So I didn't have to hunt. I didn't have to kind of like write down on a piece of paper. Thankfully, the name back here in the material definition identity name was the name of the bitmap that was for the the, the realistic sort of uh, um, material to go back to CET was in the primary color channel. Now, I'll, I'll, in a moment, at the end, I'm going to get into opacity, which can be a little bit trickier when we will deal with that with the chair, because I believe there's material on the chair that has some opacity. Because then we may have to do some searching, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Let's go back into Revit. All right, so I've got it. And I'll just go ahead and uh, just hit done on this. Now, one thing that I'm going to do in this scene because of the lighting um, is kind of high. The gamma value is kind of high on the lighting for this uh, rendering that I'll do. I'm just going to ahead of time so I can you know do things two birds with one stone is I'm just going to bring all of my brightness values um, of these bitmaps because my gamma just seemed to be a little high uh, down 50%. Uh, and so that will set the 3D material um, a little bit closer to the original. It looks a little bit darker here, but um, again, you don't necessarily have to do that. Excuse me, that really depends on what you're gonna, what your render settings are in Revit. So you might want to kind of um, find a generic studio type scene or a typical office rendering um, and play around with seeing what those materials look like in those particular scenes because, you know, the, the quality of a material can be so affected by lighting. I mean, you can have the most gorgeous material that you've defined as a PBR material and it can come out looking like mud if the lighting is really, really bad. Or you can have a mm, kind of material really basic, but if the lighting is good, the material looks like, you know, it was just, you know, top shelf, as a lot of people would say. But for now, I'm just going to drop these down to 50. Now, I'm going to come back to scale because we're going to see another issue that exists with uh, scale. And this, the cardboard is not a good example. So I'm just going to kind of leave it right there. And when we get into the wooden top, that's going to be the one that I'll introduce the scale or the screen might be another good one too, if we can find that screen. So I'll go ahead and hit done here. And I can make some other decisions like, um, do I want this to be flat? Do I want it to have any reflectivity, any, tr any transparency? Certainly not. Uh, any glossiness? Well, no, since... Uh, 
I'll just, you know, bring it even down even lower because it's typically you wouldn't have any glossiness to it. It looks pretty good the way it is. Um, and now if I go to graphic, um, I can, you know, have a graphic appearance, but I can also tell the graphic tab to use the render appearance. Now, let's just not flip it on yet. Let's just stay in appearance. Let's hit apply because that's going to update the material to the scene. You got to always remember to hit that apply button. If I hit apply and I look, I can see, okay, yeah, I've got it. And so um, if I go back, if I just hit OK, and I'll zoom in on this, you can see it still looks a little flat. I'm not really seeing the texture. Now, that might be the repeat. Um, but let's just flip over to shaded. And you can see, OK, I've still got the generic shaded form. So it's definitely doing something back to realistic. Now, if I go into that material, whoops, wrong program. And I say use render appearance, I can tell the graphic form to disregard the shade value and use whatever the appearance is. So I'll hit apply. And now if we flip back to shaded, you can see it's still using the shaded form. So the so people say, well, what's the purpose of being able to change graphics? Um, it may pick up things like color. Um, like if you are using a color versus a bitmap, it might pick up on the color uh, instead. And so there's some things. So I'll, I'll just by habit, just say use render appearance uh, in my graphics uh, setting here. Now, let's um, take a look and see if we can find the one for the screen here. Let me just OK this and kind of move pan around a little bit. We're going to see if we can find the screen material because it's kind of a, some hunting and fishing that we have to do here. And so the problem is, as I look, everything is showing me over here the um, appearance as it is by the, the rendered appearance. And so I need to see if I can find out the, the shaded. So if I go in here, um, yeah, nothing I can do there. I'm trying to see, is there some setting, some switch, you know, like show a graphics version, nothing there. Maybe filter, glass, no, that's, there's the like skip that I was talking about when you get into your major scene. Uh, I'll do that here too. Filter out just the setup materials. Ooh, loud boom in my in the studio. Um, it's like, man, where's the filter? This is maybe uh, another Autodesk wish list item here. Libraries and new material. Close asset browser. Mm, render style. Render style. Give me a render style. Um, everything is based on appearance, right? It wants to show you that real 3D rendered sphere here. I right click on it, nothing. So I'm kind of stuck on this fishing expedition here. All right, so let's see if we can find that screen. And so the screen probably has a bitmap. So I'll jump over in the CET and close that. And I'm going to sample this. So from the Material Explorer, I'll say pick, grab the screen, tell it. They want the fabric, did that very quickly. And I can see that this does have a long name. And this is CM8555 T150 212. So let's see if we can find something similar in Revit. So CM8455. Okay, let's see. CM8455, that must be it right there in the T150 and then the extra characters that was added on to randomize the bitmap, you know, for the collision between company A and company, you know, A and K, A and K. All right, and it sounds like men in black. Hey, I'm A and you're K, right? <laughs> so we need to go get that bitmap. So again, the easiest way to do it is thankfully the identity name is the bitmap name. So I'm gonna go in and copy this. Control C, go into the appearance, go out here. We want an image. Hopefully, it's remembering that directory. Excellent. Just go in here and Control V. I'm going to hit open and boom, I've got it. And you can see with my gamma being a little bit off, um, exposure value, if you want to think of it as an exposure value. If you're in Photoshop, we think of it as gamma slash exposure and exposure and those kind of things. Uh, I'm just going to go in to the edit image mode. And I'm just going to bring down the brightness uh, about uh, 50%. 
right? It's going to darken it, but it'll look a little bit closer to a nice rendered image. A lot of this, again, saw lighting exposure in your rendering settings. There's exposure values. There's, um, you can do white values, highlight values in Revit. You know, you can tweak all those things. It's, you know, that's the whole mystery behind rendering. There's no like easy button, right? All right, now the thing I really want to get into with this one is the scale size, because we're going to see every time I bring things from Revit to CET through that FBX transport protocol, I think I'm staying in the world of inches, but I hit this metric conversion that's like built into the Revit core, to the CET core. And I'm going to run into that same thing here. When I, I brought the Revit scene was set up in inches. I mean, excuse me, the CET scene was set up as a inch based system. Everything that was modeled in there was inches. Every, the, the fabric repeat five inch, say if that's a five inch fabric size, it was determined that it was supposed to be in inches, right? If I was to go over to the material editor uh, over here at the lab, we can see that um, the resolution based on the DPI, it's kind of like you gotta do some math here, 39 inches at three DPI, this repeat value, believe me, this fabric should be about five inches. That sample, we never make fabric sizes, you know, massively large. This is probably a five inch repeat, right? So if I jump back into Revit, you would say, well, it's not, I don't want a foot. So if it's say five inches, I'll just do five and five and hit done and hit apply. And I need to go back to realistic. I think I'm stuck in the shaded mode. That's why I need to stay there. Let's see if I can do it without. No, I got to close this. Come back. Go back to realistic. Oh, see, that's like, that's too blurry. It really is just too big. And so what's happening is I'm, I'm seeing that through this import method, go back to appearance and go back into the edit image mode is I need to do a, take that five and break it down um, and divide it by a metric inch to metric conversion. So 25.4 millimeters per inch. If I grab the old trusty cell phone here and I go in and I say five divided by 25.4, I need to probably use a value around say 0.2. Okay. Because it, it, there's a metric export sort of um, a complexity that seems to be happening here. I had the same thing in the other video. If you watch the Revit to CET, you see me doing the multiplication in the opposite direction because of this somehow my Revit scene was English, my CET scene is inches. Somehow in the model lab, I had to do a metric conversion. So it's just this odd thing that happens. Um, and so quarter inch, represents five inches if we divide it by 25.4 let's hit done let's hit apply and now you can see that looks right right that fabric probably was a five inch repeat sample and now it's repeating uh, correctly now the uvw mapping directions were brought over so however they were determined inside of cet designer in the model lab they're going to come over here uh, because sketchup will honor those uvw mapping directions and you can change them but that's another tutorial that we won't get into now so let's see here. So I brought in my image. I, for the sake of the tutorial, lowered its brightness by 50%. I am going to take whatever the repeat size of the material is, and I'm going to divide it by 25.4 and make that my sampling size. And I want to tile it. And so I think I'm done here. I'll just hit done. Um, this is a fabric, so I'm not going to worry about, you know, metallic, non-metallic. I'll bring down the glossiness a little bit because it is a fabric and it will have no reflectivity. And so I'm done with this one and now I can rename it. So now it's like, okay, I found my bitmap. I don't want to have to see this long name. I don't want people using my family table or excuse me, my Revit family. I say family table a lot because I'm in them a lot. So it just almost rolls off the tongue. I don't want people using the family to see these long materials and think I'm like nuts. Like, why did they name the material that crazy name? That makes no, no sense at all. So I'm going to call this one. I could call it the name of the fabric, um, which would probably be more appropriate. But I'm just going to call this one screen uh, fabric just for the sake of the tutorial. 
So screen fabric, we'll hit apply and we can see that it has changed and it has um, dropped down alphabetically uh, to the bottom uh, of the um, list here. And let's go ahead and fix the cardboard identity. It's having an identity crisis. <laughs> yes, that was intended. Cardboard, enter, apply, and pretty much stayed where it is. It'll re-render itself. And so now we have something on cardboard. So we're going to kind of go through quickly. I'm going to speed up rapidly to fix the rest of these materials and show you how do we find them. Because some of the ones that have bitmap names are easy. Some of the ones that don't have bitmap names and are using color numbers, like 373737, that's like an RGB number, or a hexadecimal number, uh, O, A, O, B, O, D is a hex color value. So like, yeah, like I'll never figure out what that is. Well, I'll show you a neat way to kind of not worry about those names and you can let the objects tell you what they are um let's fix the material one so we got this one here i'm not sure what it is but we'll just go and grab it um so this is uh cm8463 all right so let's just copy this go into appearance and let's go and and grab an albedo image excuse me, wrong down button, the one next to the big empty image bar, image. And I'll just paste it in, hit open. And it is the wood, right? Hey, I didn't know that's what wood was called, but it's going to get renamed to wood. I can guarantee you that. Now this wood, I want to put some good gloss on this wood for that table. Um, so let's go ahead and I don't know what the, the mapping size is yet. I'll come back to that one. So for now, I'm just going to bring the, the um, again, I'm going to do 50% on my brightness. Just hit done. See if we can move this back and we'll be watching the wood back here in the background. Uh, I'll need to do an apply in order to see the, the changes. So I can see it, but I'm not seeing the wood repeat. So I know my dimensions are off. And so I'm just going to click on that. Now you can click the wood picture now to just bring up that edit image. Um, it's a little bit faster than clicking down here and then scrolling. You just pick the picture and it does the same thing. So I'm going to um, bring the scale down. I'll try like an inch. Hit done, hit apply. Now I'm starting to see it back there. It still looks really, really large. I'll tell you what, I'm going to OK this and close it and orbit around a little bit. And yeah, still too big. And the grain, I want to change the grain direction. So we'll do both of those. Let's just kind of keep this here. We can kind of see what's going on. Let's go back into the wood appearance. Click the wood sample. And I'm going to really bring it down. We'll try that like half inch. I, it may have been another half inch. It's five inch by five inch sample. Um, I don't really know. I'd have to um, look at what CET designer wanted it to be. So we'll go half by half. Let's just hit done and apply and move this around. That's better, but I want to change the grain direction. No problem. I'll just go back into the image and I'll just rotate it and here in the rotation uh, 90 degrees and, and apply. And excellent, I got my wood, but I want to kind of bring up the reflectivity now. So we'll look at this material sphere. And if you don't like this one, you can change, you know, what you're rendering. You can even do a background environment. You know, you can change the lighting in here, like warm light. If you're doing more of a warm light rendering or your plaza, whatever, you, you know, this is where if you're creating a material from scratch, you can sort of impose certain lighting scenarios. So I'm just going to stay with grid light you know, for now. And so let's see here. And with that, let's make this a little bit larger. Let's go ahead and turn on some reflectivity. Oh, yeah, not going to be that reflective. So I'll bring down the direct reflectivity and I'll stay in the non-metallic mode for now. I'll probably switch it over to metallic and let's bring down the glossiness. That wood probably isn't that glossy. I'm still just not really getting what I want. So I'm going to try going metallic versus non-metallic. And now I can bring things back up again. So I'll bring up the gloss and I'll bring up the sort of the direct reflection and really kind of play with it. Metallic, non-metallic doesn't necessarily mean that it's metal. I mean, yeah, it's kind of meant for metals. So, you know, but I find it, I'm so used to the metal workflow that I find this a little bit easier to deal with. Um, and I'll just, I'm going to over reflective, make this a little bit more reflective than it normally would be. And I can adjust obliquing, which is like an anisotropity style. Um, 
So this is going to have a little bit more reflectivity than normal. More of a high gloss wood. There we go. Yeah, let's really bring that thing up. Hit apply. And now, of course, back in the scene, that's not a rendering. So you see, it's kind of looks like it's blowing out. It's this way of telling you I'm going to reflect more light in the scene. So yeah, it's pinkish and blowing out. But in the rendering, it's going to look more like this sphere. So we got a nice high gloss wood. Um, the sphere, of course, is shrinking the mapping. So it almost looks just solid brown because it's repeating so much on that little sphere. Remember, we set it to scale of 0.2, I think. And so that's very tiny on the sphere. If I want to see it on the sphere, I want to see the wood grain, I'll go back up to something like, well, let's just try two inches. And I'll reset it. Two, change one, it changes the other. Hit done. And I can start to see it a little bit. That's a very highly reflective, but I'm seeing some grain in here. Um, I could go even a little bit larger or bring down the reflectivity just to maybe see if I can bring in uh, some more of that. We are now I'm seeing a little bit more of that wood grain. That's probably pretty good, but I need to get back and adjust that size because point two is because of the metric conversion uh, is where I'm going to go. So I've got my, my highlights, I've got my glossiness value set, I've got my direct light. There's no transparency. I'm not going to worry. It's not a self-illuminating. It's not an emitter. Um, it has no bumpy surface, so I don't have to worry about any of the rest of these. This material is good. We'll just hit apply. Oh, there we go. Now we're seeing the grain. Beautiful. And let's rename this identity to wood. Okay. And we'll just hit apply. Okay, so there are some other textures that we'll need to change. And um, I am going to go through these really quickly. You may even see me fast forward the video. Um, but let me go ahead and just change these others real quick. I'll do the same thing that I did before, and then I'll get into one of the flat materials and then speed up the video again. I'll slow it down and speed it up, just kind of speed up the tutorial. So um, at this point, you're going to kind of see things go a little bit quicker um, right here. Okay, I need to see where this is. Let me just hit apply. And that was the seat of the chair. And it should have a little bit of transparency. Now, this is the one um, where it may have an opacity map. So I need to go into CET and see here what was the opacity map that CET used. Now, sometimes in CET, they don't use opacity maps or transparency maps. They simply just adjust the slider. But let's go back to CET and see if we can figure out what they did. So I'll close this. I'll leave the Explorer open. And I'm going to um, eyedropper pick the seat of this chair. And when you eyedropper pick, you have to kind of, uh, typically you may have to look and see, you know, what part. So I can see, but the green seat fabric, yes, exactly. And so that should bring me up. And so I can see opacity is checked inside of CET Designer. But it is not using a map. So it's probably just a slider. And so if there was a map, we would want to know what that map name is or alpha mask. And then we'd have to find that bitmap uh, in that big folder list, which that's where things could get a little bit crazy. I'm just going to go back into Revit and I'll just do the same thing. I'll just give it some generic transparency. So I'll enable it. And 30% transparency is probably going to work for the rendering. Um, I'm just going to leave it right there and we'll hit apply. And let's rename this identity and I'll speed that the video again. So we're just going to rename the seat fabric. Stop the video here because um, this one is not just revealing to me instantly what this is on. Um, so how can I find out what this is on? So I'm going to show you a neat little trick on how we can find it. And this will lead us into the um, solid materials too. So I'm going to take this one for now and I'm going to remove the image. And if I kind of move this over to the side a little bit, yeah, you know, it's like I'm not really seeing back in the scene, you know, what this is. Let me just hit apply and it 
close this and move this over and zoom because I need I know I'd know if I had two monitors I'd be using both of those but for the tutorial I certainly don't want to use the two monitors I'm going to kind of put this over to the side and I want that material to just sort of say here I am you know look at me and so I'm going to show you a quick easy way to do that and you'll definitely want to use this technique when it comes to the solid color material so this is the one not seeing it because remember I'm seeing the appearance value and so I'm going to just go to the color and I'm going to give it something just stand out bright pink. And it's the legs. So ah, now I know which one this was. It was a bitmap that's probably, as I look at this, it's FFMS, probably is the standard Herman Miller designation for metallic silver. So I will now go back and grab that identity and bring it in. And I can still leave this as bright hot pink up if I want to, because I'm going to override that. The, the graphics value is still this sort of gray RGB value, and that's fine. Um, we'll leave it that way. So if someone goes to shaded, they don't see crazy hot pink, but if they're rendering, they get the beautiful appearance. So back to identity, copy this, go to appearance, Click the big image bar, or you can do the drop down, paste in the name, hit open. All right, we'll do apply. And now those legs, they're that gray. So metallic silver is sort of a silvery metalish color. Not very, very glossy. It's got some gloss to it, but it's semi polished. And so I need to recreate that semi polished. So let's open up this material browser some more. And we're going to make a, a metal metal. Get it nice and large here because I don't need bump or cut out. So I'm just going to span this and I'm going to be working with the reflectivity and the glossiness. But the first thing I want to do is I'm going to switch this. Oh, I'm going to drop the that bitmap color. I need to go back here. I'm going to drop it to 50 uh, in brightness. And that bitmap is probably maybe just a primary color. There is a little bit of speckleness to metallic silver, and it may have been captured. It may not have, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to scale this down to roughly uh, 0.2, which is probably a five inch sample bitmap. All right. But now I want to work with getting the glossiness. So let's change the workflow to metallic. And now let's click on some reflectivity. Now let's too, too metallic. So let's uh, bring down the reflectivity some. First thing I typically do is I work with the amount of reflectivity in here. And um, I know, you know, from trial and error, and I have to kind of let the computer catch up because I'm going too quick for it. Um, if I go with high reflectivity and give it a chance to update, um, I'll get a very, very, you know, a lot of reflections, but I'm going to bring this down and you can see it's kind of lagging and then I'm going to bring down the glossiness because it's not very glossy. It is um, kind of a, a polished kind of a look. And Revit is like going slow down. I can't render that quickly. Bring it up a little bit more. Maybe it's a little bit more. I, mean, I could overemphasize it just so the rendering kicks a little bit better. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, it's good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to leave that one right there. We'll hit apply. And let's fix the identity name. So this is metallic silver, but I'll just call it metal legs. Ah, can't even uh, type good. Me typing bad. All right, there we go. And I don't need to hit OK because I'll lose this. So we got the metal legs. And there we go. Just kind of click off and, off and on that tab and it updated the names. See if there's any fabric ones left. Looks like we got another straggler out here somewhere. Again, I have no idea what this is. So I'm going to do the hot pink trick or a different color. We'll grab this one. We'll go to go appearance. We'll go to color. We'll try crazy hot green and apply and what are you ah it is the fabric front to the Herman Miller mirror chair and so um that I, I think I'll spin the scene around so I can see it as I'm working on it 
Oops. No. Oh, I lost my 3D view. Ah, oh, come back. Woo. All right. Spin it around. Yeah, you can see I got a lot of brightness going on in here. All right, back to materials and manage materials. Back to my crazy material. This is the one we were working on here. All right, so let's go grab the bitmap. We'll go to identity, grab the name, appearance, and click the big button, white, paste the name, and hit open. Bring it up, lower value to about 50%. Okay, you know, I wanna, I'm not sure if I grabbed the right name. Let me go back to identity, make sure I did the copy paste, control C, appearance. Almost looks like the seat material. Making me a little nervous. Let me click here. Now, if I want to change the material name, once I've brought one in, you're like, whoa, how do you change it? Just click on the source name right here. Brings me back and I'll paste. Well, it looks like it's the right one. So I guess I had it right. Go with 50%. Drop down the scale. I didn't only have to do one because they're locked over here on the right. Hit apply. Let's take a look. Okay. Yeah. Uh, probably going to need some transparency. Let's see what CET did. Close that sample and flip the CET scene around. And it's kind of orangey looking. Let's sample that. Fabric. It is a primary color. Oh, it's just a color. Oh, I see. Tricky, tricky. They did not use a diffuse bitmap in the primary color for CET Designer. I bet you they dropped a bitmap in opacity. Tricky, tricky, you guys are CET developers. Plain flat color. Looks like it's RGB uh, 180, 120, 70. So we'll recreate that RGB color. And then the bitmap name and why it, I thought it should be orange, we'll have to drop that in the transparency. <laughs> and you can see it's meant to be 3 inches by 3.28 inches by 3.28 inches. Okay, so let's remember this number. I'll kind of see if I can put this over to the side so I don't look. Well, it's going to go away when I, because Revit is full screen. This, again, double monitors work really well here. 180, 120, 70. All right, so let's go 180. I better write it down. 180, 120, 70. 180, 120, 70. Everybody keeps saying it for me. 180, 120, 70. 180, 180, 120, 70. Okay. And we need to clear this. And now we're going to go into transparency and put the name in here. That's kind of cool because what they're doing, and here I don't have to worry about adjusting the value because um, this it's, it's alpha data, it's transparency. I want it full, full brightness. And so let's just bring this down. So the color uh, that they were using um, was, and it actually is still maybe a little too bright, so I might tint it down a little bit. Um, in order to sort of bring down some of that brightness, because remember my scene is kind of high. Um, and so let's see, image fade. If I do an image fade, I'm not going to do anything because that image fade is if I'm using an image, glossiness, um, it's not really a glossy material. So I don't have just a flat out, oh, I think I got a tent down here. So here we go. Well, we get to use tent. So tint, so now I've enabled it. And what I'm going to do is tint, is I'm going to put the same color and value in and then just darken it instead of just tinting it gray. So I'll go, I'll start off with 180. Now, some of you may be saying, just go back to the albedo color and just darken it by grabbing that slider and pull it down. Well, I could do that, but I want to keep that color preserved just in case my lighting scenario changes. So I'm just going to bring, using this tint, I'll darken it down about half of what it was before. 
And there I've sort of simulated the same thing, but I preserve the RGB uh, value with this. Maybe bring it up a little bit. And that tint. That looks great. I'll take it. All right. Now, and a bitmap size, did I get it scaled? Oh, they said it was three inches um, by three inches. So let's see, what was it? It was 3.28. All right, bring out the old trusty calculator. About 0.13. Okay, so I'm seeing a rounding to a quarter inch, which is fine. I don't, I'm not worried about it being hyper exact for right now. And of course, it hopefully will render fine uh, when we hit the render button back there. Just want to make sure it's remembering. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, let's bring this up and we will call this one change its identity. We could name it the name of the material. In this case, I'm just going to call it um, back fabric. All right. Click, click, and there we go. So now I think all I've got less, oh, let's filter these, get rid of, I uh, had to skip. And I'm going to filter out the generics that came along with the template, with the family template. Look at only those that came in with the SketchUp file. And I got a lot of these to do, and I'll be doing a lot of crazy pinks and figuring out what they are and then converting them over. And so I'm going to say apply and hit okay because I need to do some zooming and I want to flip it around because I need to see the back of that chair. That's probably pretty good. And we're going to do some rocking and rolling here as we go through the rest of these. And with a little bit more um, speed. Filter, skip. All right, so I'll start at the bottom and go to the top. Dun, 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 dun. Something called layer, layer zero. All right, appearance. Let's go with uh, something really bright. See what pops. Nothing, don't have to worry about that one. We'll just leave it as a bright color, just in case. Skip that one, color F1, 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 F1. Okay, don't know what you are. We will give you, go with the same bright color again. Apply, got to remember to keep hitting apply. And I don't see anything. Oh, it, no, there it is. It is the cup um, body uh, for the coffee. Because that should be sort of a white. And I don't need a bitmap for that. So I'll just go with white and maybe dim it down just a tad. Maybe even give it a little bit of goldenish sort of color. So we'll start with yellow and then we'll just bring that down. Oh, I, I'm, the RGB slider in here is really kind of bad. So yeah, you can go Pantone. If you want to do that? Um, sure, it's still not the best. I mean, I, oops. I wish they would have um, created a better color picker. Um, inside of Revit, but again, I'm in Revit bash mode here. I'm going to go with and then pull up this brightness right here. Yeah, nice cream color is good. All right, and I will bring down any glossiness in the rendering. It's basically cardboard. That's good. And let's rename this one. This is mug body, or cup body. All right, moving up to this one. What are you? Let's freak this down a little bit. I don't need full scale. Perfect. What are you? The top, and that will be a glossy white plastic. I could go find one. Again, if you've got your own materials, you're good to go. Here I don't have any materials, so I'm going to go with pure white. And I will bring up some reflectivity. Let's get a little bit larger. Hello. It is, I 
broken the material wall expander. Oh, I can't believe it. I broke it. I'm trying to expand it. But my, my, I can still grab it with my cursor, but usually you get sort of like a double line. That's good right there. I'll just hit apply and rename this thing up top or mug top. Okay. Don't need this one. Oh, what are you? Appearance. Generic. Close the tab. Right to go. Uh, pink is fine. You want to go pink? Salmon. Anything change? Hello? Uh, could be something under. Oh, just just kind of take a quick peek. Oh, it was the back of the chair. I missed it. Hello, back of the chair. Okay, you are probably... Now, if I want to know exactly what that color is, I could jump over to CET and query that. I could probably hit it right here on the side. There's a piece of it down there, too. Seat back. All right, so there's my color values. 172, 83, 65. 72, 83, 65. 72, 83, 72. So, oh, well, there's that number there. Oh, here's another thing that would be some wish list item. Because remember, it's bringing that material. This is, this is to evidence right here, the proof that it did you pick up some of those values, the names is partly proof, and the color value in graphics tab is the other proof. I don't have to go back to CET anymore now, um, that it when it brings that SketchUp file in, instead of dumping that in appearance, it's dumping it into graphics tab. This is another wish list item. Say, right-click, copy that color. Come on, I can do it in other programs. I can double-click this, right? Great. And I can pick up these numbers. Um, I guess I could do an add. Maybe I'll try that. I'm going to go here. I want to do an add and just stick it in my custom colors. Maybe that will remain. If I go to appearance, click. <laughs> it did. Booyah. Another one of those tricky tricks for you Revit hardcore people. Maybe this is something you haven't seen. I was able to get it over, but I had to stick it in the custom tab. I just, I just bashed this terrible like 1980s uh, Microsoft uh, um, uh, Windows 3.1 style color picker um, because it's so terrible. Uh, versus, you know, you can't even see the range of the gamut very well in this. But here it just saved itself by giving me the ability to do a custom color. So, oh, this is going to speed up the process even more. Sweet. All right. Um, this is the chair back. It probably has some reflectivity to it. Probably not a lot. A very, very, very subtle. Um, but I need to tint that color down. I know it's not that bright. So again, I'll just go down here, enable tint, grab that same color, and use it to that's probably about the color here that that tent sort of brought it helped to bring it down uh perfect uh, so now let's go back to the um reflectivity to kick in the glossing and we need the reflectivity to help glossiness but i'm going to bring this way down i mean like way down and then bring the gloss down that's maybe a little bit less um about four I'm going to leave that right there. Hit apply. And let's rename it. Okay, this is um, just back, chair back. We got the other one called fabric. We'll just call this some chair back. All right, keep moving. Uh, oh, it jumped up to the top. So let's see, we we're going from the bottom up. Oh, we need to refilter because I closed it. Skip file. Okay, next in line, you. Parents need to find out who this is. I like this color here. It really just says hello. Uh, I got that orange. I'm going to go with green. I'm not seeing it. Hi. Ah, it is the cylinder. Okay, cylinder is, I could go find a metal in the, in the Revit library, but I'm just going to go make something myself. So, all right, metal. We'll just start with black. And maybe give it a little bit of gray. I could pop a little blue in there, but I don't really care. And this will be a metallic structure workflow. And it will turn on the reflectivity, but we're going to bring it down and 
typically cylinders aren't too too um, glossy. And let's bring that color down a little bit deeper. This is just the cylinder. And bring up the reflectivity a little bit. All right, that looks good. Hit apply. Let's rename it. Cylinder. All right. Next. This guy. Who are you? Oh, okay. It is the um, body of the chair. Um, let's. It probably is just using a flat color. Um, it is 70, 70, 72. So let's just go in here. Uh, we'll just um, pick an empty slot. And I lost the color. So let's just go back and just do an add. All right, let's do it in custom color. That's good. Hit OK. Go to appearance. Click the custom color. And a little too bright. I could use tent. If I wanted to preserve the original color, I could do that and then just, let's just go down to tent. Pop it in tent. Same one. And let that color bring it bring itself down. Perfect. All right. And a little bit of reflectivity, non-metallic. I'll stay in that world for this one. The plastic is good. Apply. Let's name it. This is chair body. Or whatever the Herman Miller material happens to be. All right, I think we're almost there. Oh, this one, I had no idea where this was. I left it this crazy bright red, and it must be just something hidden somewhere. Um, oh, we got one here. I don't think we've done the glides on the base yet. Oh, the arm pads, they look pretty bright too. So this might, we'll see what it is. So let's just say hello. Arm pads, knobs, and casters are all using the same material inside of CET. Um, probably a blackish. I could go into CET and find a bit. I'm just going to, and let's just, I guess we could look at it. Maybe they have a bump material and bump, maybe. Just just for fun, we'll, we'll interrogate it. I can get a piece of it here. I kind of doubt it. No bump. It's just 10, 11, 13. Okay. Which I can probably get off of the... Um, uh, the graphics, right? And we'll just add it. That goes to the first slot. Hit OK. Jump in appearance. It's no longer going to be crazy pink. And we want to tint it. So we'll drop it into... It looks pretty good, but might not have to do it. This one's dark enough. And just... We'll drop it in there, too. Seemed to work great for the other brighter plastics. And... and um, Colors, metals, um, but it's going to need a very minute amount of activity and bring that gloss down. It just seems really dark, but I guess that's what it is. Hit apply. Since this is covering a bunch of things, I'll just call this um, chair parts. And use a more specific name like BK or graphite or whatever you want to call it. And let's see, I don't know if this one is anything. It might be, maybe those are the glides because I thought that's what the next one was going to be. Nothing is popping out. And is there any, oh, we got this one. These things like come out of nowhere. But this one has got to be, I'll just um, add that in as my new, Custom color. Go here just to see which one. And this is the glides to the chair. I mean, to the table. Drop you in here. Come down here and make you also the tint color. And glides are probably metal. So we'll go with a metallic workflow. Give some gloss, tiny bit of reflectivity. That's good enough. 
And these are, give them a new identity. These are the glides. So the only one we couldn't find is this 0000255. It might be something completely hidden. It might be the pieces to the um, tile there. So let's see if either one of these things come up. Let's, we got one that's crazy red. Let's make this one, a, go back to this one and make it a crazy green. Those are the only two we're missing. So we're missing crazy green and crazy red. So let's just sort of orbit around, see if anything jumps out at us. And I thought it might be the control. Just don't see it. It might be a component like hidden inside of that table. Like maybe if you deleted the tabletop, it's like a screw or maybe the mechanism. But I think I got it all. I'm ready to drop a floor. Just a basic floor. We'll use one of those materials, the pink or green one, and we'll re recast it to something new, and we'll render. So let's jump into the, um, uh, oh, save the family. The family doesn't need a floor. So we're in the family. We've got this thing ready, um, and we will let the Revit scene take care of the floor. So let's save this. So now we've got a Revit family. All our materials are there. We've got our mapping set. Um, it's, it's ready to go and use inside of a full-on Revit scene. Fantastic. So let's do a new. We will use the art, tem art template. Hit OK. First thing we'll do is might as well drop the component in. That'll tell us how big the floor should be. I mean, I could do the floor first, but it doesn't matter. But we need to load the family. All right, so that's insert, load family. And there is our station number one. And there are some of our auto saves. Open, and we'll go back to architecture, component, it's the loaded component, drop it right in the middle. Hit escape two times. And now we'll go to a floor and we'll just do a simple rectangle around it. Works for me. Check and we'll just go and get us a nice 3D view. And we'll zoom in. All right, and let's just adjust some of these viewing modes. So the shaded, we'll just turn off the edges and that applies to the realistic. And so here we've got the shade set uh, where we want it. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, turn on the shadows. Uh, ambient shadows is sort of like uh, general diffusing shadows. I mean, th now we're getting into rendering things, and I just want to you know finish the tutorial because I know you guys have been hanging out for a very long time, and I want to just you know just do a quick rendering. So I'll leave it off for now. And you know, as far as lighting goes, I'm just going to leave everything sort of as is. I can adjust it and tweak it. I probably tweaked it on the at the intro. Um, realistic um, is good. I could start adjusting exposure. Go manual. Um, but again, this is not a rendering tutorial, background, none. All right, great. And let's go in and check out the realistic mode. And we've got materials. Yes, still not too sure about that opacity map if I got it right. Um, but I think I'm, uh, I need to get a floor material going here. And how about a clear clad white? We'll, we'll see what that does. It could be a wood floor, but I just wanted a white floor. There we go. Now we're ready to render, and I can move the sun around, get the shadows, or rotate the object. Um, you know, I want to kind of recreate that scene, so I think what I'm going to do is grab it and rotate it. There we go. Rotate. Rotate it around. I, and I shouldn't really rotate it. What I should be doing is moving the sun around. I'm just gonna, you know, kind of take a cheater way to do it, right? But you kind of get it. All right, so let's orbit this thing around a little bit. Let's see if we can't get that same shot. And let's go into the view. We're so close. And bring up the render dialog. We'll do a quick draft render. Oh, we're starting to get it. Oh, the sun. I don't really like the position or time of day. I will tweak that. Um, yeah, I, I want to, or I could just leave it 
and I could start messing with the exposure. Let's just do that. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to stay away from rendering and adjusting sun and I'll just want to kind of make it look good. So I'll just brighten up the exposure a little bit. Ah, done. And hit OK. The rendering's looking good. You know, it's uh, serving the purpose. Let's jump up to high. And let's see if we can't get a better looking rendering created. And we'll just let it progressively go through. And there we can see it coming. We can see that the materials, um, we recreated the material. So the, the, again, the, the key thing here is go with a CET export as SketchUp. I did high res to so get the best quality possible. Started a new Revit family using a generic model template imported in the SketchUp file, knew that I was going to have to make some material adjustments. All the material definitions in CET were packed into the sort of graphic mode of the material display, um, sort of the shaded view mode and not the realistic mode. And so we had to then manipulate those realistic modes of cutting and pasting, some copying, you know, of um, RGB values, some recreating of slider values. I mean, you could go back to CET if you want. If you want to mimic it exactly, then read their RGBs for their reflectivity values, their RGBs for their transparencies, all of that. Or you could just make it yourself, or you may be you know, using your own material library. But the point is, at the end of the day, we can very effectively go from having something in CET to make it a family inside of Revit with materials, the same materials that were used inside of CET, and give that to people to use. Now, the thing that I want to mention is watch out for those bitmaps. You In those material definitions are bitmaps that I currently linked to the bitmaps in the CET temp folder. So probably the better thing to do is when you are finding those bitmaps, find it, copy it off to your bitmap um, sort of um, uh, shared location for all of your Revit materials. Because if you don't do that, what's going to happen is you're going to give this to someone and they're going to say, you didn't pack it. I don't have the bitmaps. Every, the bitmap is empty. It said could not find bitmap. And so you, again, as you, if you're making families, you would realize you always need to pack up your materials and your bitmaps along with it. If you're doing this, you know, as a CET slash Revit person, um, just be warned. I want to say that one more time. When you find those bitmaps, put them in a location that, put them in the same place as your Revit file, put them in the same scene folder or call it, create a folder called maps because you want to hold on to those bitmaps. And so it looks great. I see metallic silver legs. I see the wooden top. I can see a little bit of transparency coming through the seat. Like, you know, the, the fabric on the um, uh, privacy screen looks fantastic. Um, it's great. I mean, I couldn't have asked for more. And so I hope you really got a lot out of this tutorial. I know it was fairly long, but I really wanted to show you that it could be done. Um, and I mean, you could have stopped it a long time ago. That's great. And uh, I really appreciate it. If more videos to come. If you have anything that you're curious, how do I do something? Uh, put it in the comments and uh, let me know. I'm uh, always up for new challenges to sort of solve a lot of the problems. And that's what the whole YouTube channel is really all about, is to just throw out a lot of tutorials to, you know, bring all of my knowledge out to everybody to make everyone a better, you know, visualization type uh, uh, artist, if you will. So drop a like on this video if you liked it, share it with your friends and subscribe for more. And this is Roy and have a great day. See ya.